Cavalcade of America. Starring Virginia Bruce in Boy Wanted. Presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. With Virginia Bruce as Miss Ransom, here is Boy Wanted. Time today. Place, your hometown. Here's your change, and here's your package. Thank you. Now then, sir, can I help you? Yeah, you sure can. I want a doll. Any particular kind of doll? Well, just give me the best. You know, after years and years of wanting a youngster, my wife and I are finally going to have one. Congratulations. Is it going to be soon? Tomorrow at 4 o'clock. You mean they can tell you just to the minute these days? Oh, don't Tomorrow? misunderstand. We're adopting a child. Oh, I see. You know, we've had our name in with the adoption agency for months, but we just now got word they got one for us. Isn't that wonderful? A boy or a girl? A girl, naturally. Why would I be buying dolls? How old is the little girl? Well, I, I'm i not sure. We told the agency that if it was possible, we wanted a little blue-eyed blonde girl about three. Well, here's a doll any little girl would love. I'll take your word for it, miss. Wrap it up. I hope it wasn't inconvenient for you to come down here today. Oh, of course not, Mr. Ransom. Uh, we were wondering when you'd have news for us. We've been waiting a long time for a little girl. Yes, I realize that. That's why I contacted you. Have you really got a child for us? Yes, Mrs. Mitchell. There's one available. Oh, isn't that wonderful, Ed? It sure is. Uh, how about it, Miss Ransom? Can we see her now? Well, there are a few things I have to explain first. You know our procedure here. We insist on giving you all information about a child except its parents' identities. We tell you what they were like but not who they were. Yes, you explained that when we first came here. The child we have available would be perfect for you, I think. There are only two things that disturb me. Uh, well? One is the rating test isn't quite what it should have been. Oh, you mean the child isn't normal? Sometimes it does mean that, oh, really? but not in this case. Here it means that the child, while intelligent, doesn't always cooperate. The nurse and I get on splendidly with him. A very loving child. But somehow the doctor has had difficulty in getting the cooperation he should have on the test. Well, sometimes tests don't prove a thing. What this child needs, I'm convinced, is a home where it's very much wanted. Well, I think we can guarantee that, can't we, dear? Oh, yes. Well, then, perhaps you would like to meet him. Him? You mean it's a boy? Oh, Ed just had his heart set on a girl. Well, so have you, dear. <sighs> Look at the doll Ed brought with him. Mr. Mitchell, if you were having your own baby, you wouldn't be so particular, would you? Well, that's true, Suppose but... you let me tell you a little bit about this boy. Well, I'm... Uh... Before Rudy came to us, he lived with his grandmother. His home was the worst kind of a tenement. They were desperately... Leaving a kid this size. What? Look. Ah, the old lady went and left him, all right. Is she dead? Well, let's make sure. No, no, I'm not going to hurt your mother, kid. That's his grandmother. Where's the rest of the family? That's all there is. Well, hasn't the kid any parents? He's got a mother around someplace, but heaven knows where she is these days. She's no good. The old lady raised the boy. Where's his father? The old lady always said her daughter's husband was dead. The old lady said. 
It does happen. <laughs> there ever was a husband. No other relatives? Only the mother. Don't you know any way to locate her? Nah. Well, so we do then. We've got to find a place for the kid here to stay. What's your name, kid? Oh, what's your name? Yeah, I guess I wouldn't feel much like talking either. His name's Rudy Peterson. And the old lady's name is Schwartz. I can tell you everything about her. I kind of figured you could. Come on, kid, let's go. That same night, Rudy was brought here to us. Well, here's the children's agency, Rudy. Here's where you're going to stay for a while. Uh, I wish I could live in a swell place like this, huh, Rudy? Is this the boy you called up about, officer? Oh, yes, this is Rudy Peterson. Hello, Rudy. He's uh, not much of a talker. Well, it's late even for such a big boy. How old are you, Rudy? Uh, tell her, Rudy. You know how old you are, don't you? He's four. Uh, here's all the rest of the dope on this card, and this bundle's all the clothes he owns. Is he to be here just tonight? Well, there's no telling how long it'll take to find his mother. The word's gone out, but nobody can say when she'll show up. Well, Rudy can stay with us just as long as he likes. Ah, uh, you hear that, Rudy? Ah, uh, don't let it get you, kid. They'll take swell care of you here until we find your mother. Huh? Good night. Good night. Oh, come on, Rudy. I think it's time for us to go to bed. I don't want to go to bed. I want to go home. I want my grandma. Well, you can talk, can't you? If I want to. <laughs> and you can tell me what kind of a toy you'd like to take to bed with you. I don't want any toys. I want to go home. But this is your home now, Rudy. I will stay here. I want to go I'm sleepy. Yes, you are, Rudy. It's late even for big boys. Come on with me now. Come on. I don't like it here. We did everything we could to make Rudy like us and to make him happy here. But it was slow going. Our psychologist did his best to find out why. Now, Rudy, I want you to put this little puzzle together, hmm? And put it together right and make the picture of a dog, hmm? See how quickly you can do it now. Go on, Rudy, try. Put the puzzle together for the doctor, Rudy. You've done harder ones than this lots of times. <sighs> He's very uncooperative. I don't understand it. He can be as good as gold. Rudy, show the doctor how well you can do the puzzle. Please. Well, I can't give him any grade on that one. These tests are given to all our children, including the very youngest, and are one of the means we use for determining the child's fitness for adoption and the sort of home he should be placed in. Are the results on the rating test for Rudy Peterson, Miss Ransom. Is it that low? He certainly doesn't look below normal in intelligence to me. According to the doctor, this test doesn't prove a thing. Rudy just wouldn't cooperate. Do you think he can learn to? <laughs> He's got to do better than this if we ever intend placing him for adoption. He's a fine boy, Miss Ransom. All he needs is parents who'll understand him. I think you're right. It's a little soon to think about adoption anyway. We don't know yet what the mother wants to do. Oh, well, have they found her? She's waiting in the outer office now. Not that dark-haired girl I saw coming in. I presume it is. Well, she's only a child herself. She looks about 16. According to the police report, she's 19. Ask her to come in, will you, please? Yes, Miss Ransom. Will you go in, please? Me? Yes, you. Sit down, Mrs. Peterson. I'm Miss Ransom, head of the agency here. What do you want to see me for? Well, since your mother died, we've had your child here with us. Well... What are your plans for Rudy, Mrs. Peterson? What do you mean? What are my plans for Rudy? Well, now that your mother isn't here to take the responsibility for him, don't you think you should? Me? Take the kid? I should say not. I never did want him, and I don't now. And nobody can make me take him either. According to the law, Mrs. Peterson, you are responsible for oh, him. Oh, yeah. But we're not so much interested in the strict legality of things as what's best for Rudy. How could I be any good for him? 
I can't even do for myself, hardly. We might be able to arrange some financial assistance to help you take care of Rudy. And where would that leave me for boyfriends? What fellow's going to look at me if I got a four-year-old kid around my neck? No, thanks, I won't take him. He's a lovely boy, Mrs. Peterson. The last picture Ma sent me, I, I could see he was getting to look like his father. And maybe if, if Pete was alive, I'd feel different. You may marry again. What of it? Sometimes in cases like yours, we keep the child for the mother until she's married again. And have Rudy grow up like I did? No, thanks. I've been working with children for a long time. And what a child needs more than anything else in his home life is to feel loved. Like I was, you mean? With Pa beating up on Ma and me and my brother that died? Every night, practically? Oh, yes, sir. I sure got a lot of love at home. One night when I was about 12, Pa... Well, never mind. I left the house and went to live with a girlfriend. I got a job in the dime store. I never put a foot in our place till Pa died. I was glad he died. And so was Ma. Your father sounds as if he'd been a very sick man. Everybody's sick when they got trouble like ours. That's why I won't take the kid. I'd, I'd end up hating him. I know I would. No one's going to make you take Rudy. I think it might be better for him if we found him another home. Get him a nice place. Give the kid a break, huh? You understand what this would mean. You would have to sign papers giving up all claims to your son. Nor would you ever know the person to adopt him. They, on the other hand, would be equally in the dark about your identity. Would, uh, would I get something out of it? What do you mean? Well, if some rich family adopts my boy, they'd pay me something, wouldn't they? No recognized adoption agency in the United States permits children to be paid for. I read all the time in the papers where some couple pays $2,000 for a baby. Somebody else pays a thousand. Yes, yes, I know. Unfortunately, there is a black market in babies. But it's foolish procedure for all parties concerned. I don't see why it's foolish to get money. I'll tell you why, Mrs. Peterson. We don't allow any child to go into a home until there has been an examination of the child's heredity. Oh, now, look here. We are just as careful in our investigation of the family adopting the child. Oh. You will know that Rudy will be placed in a decent home with loving parents who live harmoniously and according to good standards and where there will be reasonable financial security. Furthermore, both child and adopting parents are on trial for one year before final adoption. And during this time, the agency protects the child's interests. I see. Now, Rudy would get none of these protections if you sold him in the black market. Well, as long as it's best for Rudy. You don't have to decide right away, you know. We might as well get it over with. Don't you want to see Rudy first? Oh, what's the good? If he looks as much like, like Pete as he did in the picture, it'd just make me feel bad. You might change your mind. No, not me. I don't love the kid as much as I should, I suppose, but, but I love him enough to know you could open the phone book and point, and you'd be sure and have somebody better for the kid than I am. Well, we'll have the papers drawn up then. I'll get in touch with you when they're ready. Miss Ransom, uh... Would you give this six cents to Rudy for a chocolate bar? Ma wrote once how he liked them. Of course I will, Mrs. Peterson. Goodbye. Bye. Sounds like a spunky little tyke. I've seen enough children to know a good one when I see him. And I'll vouch for Rudy. There's one obstacle. Because he's had trouble, he's going to take more love and affection than most people have got to give. But I think you two have it. And that's why I picked you for Rudy. Because as much as we wish to make parents happy here, our main concern is always with the child. But Ed did want a girl. Well, just because we meet this Rudy doesn't mean we're going to adopt him, dear. After all, if Miss Ransom has taken all this trouble with us, well, we owe it to her at least to say hello to the boy. You're the one who wants the girl. I just want a child. Shall I have him brought in? Please. Betty. Yes, Miss Ransom. Will you have Miss Fagan bring Rudy in, please? Uh, <clears throat> how much longer would we have to wait for a girl, Miss Ransom? There's no telling. I see. As long as we've waited this long, Ed, we can wait a while longer. Whatever you think, dear. Come in. Oh, Rudy, I want you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell. Oh, what a darling little boy. Say hello to Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell, Rudy. Hello. Hello, Rudy. Uh, are you 
going to be my new grandma? Oh. <laughs> well, that's not the way to make an impression, Rudy. As you know, his grandmother raised him. And you know something? I would love to be Rudy's new grandmother. I would, Ed. I guess I shouldn't have said it without asking you, but he's the darlingest little boy I ever saw. Oh, he looks mighty fine to me. I, I guess boys are more fun anyway. Would you like to come and live with us, Rudy? Uh, I, I don't think I'll, I'll want to leave here. You'd love our house, Rudy. You'd have a playroom all your own, and there's a swing out back in the yard. Well, would I like a swing, Miss Ransom? I'm sure you like everything at your new home, Rudy. Well, we'll see. You are listening to Virginia Bruce as Miss Ransom in Boy Wanted, an original radio play on the Cavalcade of America, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. The right home for the right child. And Miss Ransom feels a good day's work is done. She felt that way a few months back when four-year-old Rudy Peterson was placed in the Mitchell home on a a probationary basis. Rudy's case had troubled Miss Ransom, but she's confident he'll be happy with the Mitchells, and they with him. Well, Miss Fagan, how are all your charges? Oh, that Meadows baby brought in Patigo in. Now they've all got it. They've got that darn purple ointment over everything. Clearing up, though, isn't it? Oh. Miss Ransom? Yes, Betty? Mrs. Mitchell is out here. Can you see her? Why, of course. Ask her to come in, please. How are they and Rudy making out? The last report I had was fine. Hello, Miss Ransom. Hello, Mrs. Mitchell. Uh, you know Miss Fagan. Oh, yes. And how's my favorite, Rudy? Oh, he's fine. Well, you give him a hug for me. I will. Well, I'm glad you're so happy with Rudy. Oh, Miss Ransom, something's terribly wrong. What do you mean? With Rudy? It's not Rudy. It's, it's us. It's all our fault. Oh, now, don't get excited, Mrs. Mitchell. Just tell me what the trouble is. Well, for some reason, Rudy just can't get on with Ed. How does your husband feel about the boy? Oh, he just dotes on him. Every time he comes home from the road, he brings toys for him, takes him to ball games. He, he's just crazy about him. And uh, how does Rudy behave? He acts as if he were terrified of Ed. When he and I are home alone, he laughs and plays and runs all over the house. The minute Ed comes in, he goes up to his own room and shuts the door. Or if we make him stay with us, he, he just sits. He won't say a word. How long has this been going on? Ever since he's been with us. But I didn't want to tell you because I thought you'd take him away from us. And we just love him so. I think I'd better pay you a visit. What days is your husband in town? Every weekend. He gets back tomorrow about four o'clock. Would it be convenient if I came out the end of the afternoon tomorrow? Oh, of course. And I do hope you can find out what's wrong. It's just killing us, really. We both feel so inadequate. As if somehow we're letting the child down. Oh, I'm sure you aren't, Mrs. Mitchell. But there's one thing we have to face. Children are like grown-ups. You can't make them like things. It's a fine train, Rudy. My new grandma got it for me. Rudy, Daddy bought that for you. I don't want to play with my train anymore. I think you have a lovely playroom, Rudy. I got a rocking horse. Look at Miss Ransom. Hi, old silver. Hi, old silver. You must be happy to be in such a nice house. I love my new grandma. We love you too, Rudy. And what is it you were going to call me? Mother. That's better. Hi, old silver. Bang, bang. Daddy, now. Aren't you going to ride your horse anymore, Rudy? I'm tired of playing. Hello, where's my boy? Tell Daddy where you are, Rudy. I'm up here. Wait till you see what I've got. Oh, look, Rudy. A puppy. 
Well, what do you say to your daddy for that, Rudy? I want a sword. Well, he wants you, son. Look at him lap your hand. I don't want him. Oh, look, Rudy, you shouldn't hit the dog. I don't want him. I don't want anything you give me. Now, Rudy. You're no good. You're no good. That's no way to talk to daddy, Rudy. I won't like you if you do that. I don't care. He's no good. Why isn't he, Rudy? He's a man. There's our explanation for it. I should have seen it before, I guess. I knew he didn't like the doctor. And Miss Fagan told me he wouldn't talk to the policeman who brought him to the agency. But somehow I never added it all up. Uh, you mean he, he hasn't anything against me personally? No, no. Just that you're a man. Oh, you think his grandmother would have had more sense? Filling a little boy's head with stuff like uh, that? Not so loud, dear. We don't want him to hear us. I wouldn't blame Rudy's grandmother too much, Mrs. Mitchell. Consider the life she'd had. It's no wonder her outlook was warped. Well, what can we do about him, Miss Rance? That depends how patient a man you are, Mr. Mitchell. There isn't a child in the world who can resist love for any length of time. And as soon as Rudy comes to realize how you feel about him, he'll change. It's a question of his finding out that he can trust you and depend on you. I'll try anything if you think it'll work. I hope it will. Daddy got it for you, Rudy. He isn't Daddy. He wants to be, Rudy. He loves you so much. Well, here comes Daddy's car in the drive now. Let's go meet him. I'm going out back with my puppy. All right, Rudy. Oh, Miss Ramster. Hello, Mrs. Mitchell. I, I was just about to ring your bell. You startled me. I, I thought it was my husband. I thought I'd stop by and see how things were working out. Oh, about the same, I guess. No better? Down deep, I think Rudy wants to love Ed, but he can't bring himself to trust him somehow. It takes a great deal of patience, my dear. I know. And I'm afraid Ed has about given up. Here he is now. Oh, hello, dear. Hello, Ed. Hello, Miss Ransom. Hello, Mr. Mitchell. Well, where's Rudy? Out back with the puppy. Still ducking me, oh, huh? No, Ed, of course he isn't. Oh, why kid me, Helen? I'm not getting any place with a boy, and you know it. I guess Miss Ransom does, too. I'm sure he wants to love you, Ed. I'm doing all I can, dear. I thought getting him the puppy would do the trick. Now I'm just wondering if anything will ever work. Something's got to. I'm beginning to think we might as well call it quits. This isn't fair to the kid. Oh, Ed. Are you sure you don't want to try a little longer, Mr. Mitchell? Well, what's the use, Miss Ransom? Yeah. Huh? Mama, what's the matter, Mama. dear? Oh, the puppy got out, Mama. Oh, don't worry. He won't oh. run away. We we'll find him for but you. the big dog next door is there. Where are they, son? In the backyard. Now, you just wait here with Mother Rudy. I'll fix this. Oh, don't go out there, Ed. That dog's vicious. I'll be all right. Oh, Ed, please be careful. Let that pup alone. Get out of here. Get out, Guardy. Get out. I don't want to bust this ball club on you, but I sure will if you don't get moving. Get out, you. Get out. I'll show you I mean business. Get out of here now. Rudy. One home and bite somebody there. Rudy. Oh, there, puppy. Take it easy, fellas. Come back here, Rudy. It's all right. The dog's gone. Well, there isn't a mark on the pup, Rudy. He's just scared, I guess. No, I think we'd better get Mr. Mitchell to a doctor. There seems to be blood on his hand. Are you hurt, Ed? No, no, no. I'm all right. <laughs> There's nothing to be upset about, Rudy. The big dog's gone. But he bit you. Well, <laughs> it takes more than an old dog to hurt your daddy, Rudy. Just a scratch. You, you know what? What, son? I, I love the puppy. You gave me daddy. Did everything go all right, Miss Ransom? Yes. From now on, Rudy Peterson is Rudy Mitchell. <laughs> Another homeless child takes his place in American family life. With our many adoption services, we realize that this is welfare work of greatest importance. It leads to well-balanced American homes, 
and happy homes lead to the prosperity and welfare of our people and our country. Tonight's cavalcade play, Boy Wanted, was written by Frank Gabrielson. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Bryan. The part of Rudy was played by Alan Shea. This is Ted Pearson speaking. Next week, Cavalcade will present one of our most distinguished Americans, Irene Dunn, whose career as a top-ranking film star and citizen has won her admiration and respect in Hollywood and honors in the world at large. Our broadcast will come to you from Buffalo, New York. On this occasion, Miss Dunn will portray the character of Mama, which she made famous in the motion picture success. Our original radio play, Citizen Mama, tells the further adventures of Mama and the Hanson family. Cavalcade of America is directed by John Zoller and comes to you each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.